Welcome back to part two of the Fly Dubai crash in Rostov on Don. In a normal go round, you only use about 80% thrust, which is reduced thrust, which is well enough power to get away from the ground. So now they have full power in combination with gear and flaps retracted, which is going to create a huge push on the control column. You come in for the approach and then you push the toga switch. You are then supposed to do about 15 degrees nose up. But in this case now, you have huge forces on the control column. So the, the commander is going a little bit back and forth like this, like 4 degrees, 9 degrees, 14 degrees, 18 and a half degrees. And then you go back again. And he never really finds uh, where to go now. The co-pilot is prompting the captain to keep the pitch, to keep the pitch, to check the speed, to check the, par the parameters. The co-pilot is definitely in the game. And they're going back and forth and pitching up and down. The commander not really have any control of the situation at all. Uh, the total time elapsed now is about 70 seconds. So from the commander push the toga switch until the impact is 70 seconds. For the first 10 seconds, the commander do some actions, but then for the last 60 seconds, uh, no calls at all from the commander. But the co-pilot seems to be in the game pretty good. And the definite turning point comes when they are sort of the pitching up and climbing like this and they have now climbed to a level of 3,350 feet and it's still fully recoverable and now at this at this situation now the captain has his left hand on the control column and on top of that you have the the trim switch for the horizontal uh, trim stabilizer this one and now he makes a fatal decision he takes the switch push it forward and hold it for 12 seconds. That means, I, I would try to explain for you now. Let's say that you have a normal swing and, and you sort of, you, you want to have the, the airplane balanced for this. And the trim in the aft here is sort of trimming uh, the forces, right? So at the beginning, they have a, a trim li like this, sort of, they're very heavy in the nose, pointing upwards, and most likely, therefore, the commander does this down pitch. So when he now push for 12 seconds, then they will travel all the way so we have a heavy nose instead, like this. And now is really, really heavy forces on the control column. And in the flight data record, you can see that there is a momentary pitch up but it's extremely heavy now and you're full, almost full nose down trim. But it's still recoverable. It is still recoverable. So now if, if any of the pilots grab the control column and start trimming the other way, you can get out of it, but they don't. So at 2,800 feet, with a pitch of about 40 degrees, 280 knots indicated eye speed, flap 10, full thrust, and a 2.4 nose down, they start going down towards the airport. In the very last moments, the co-pilot, he tries to pull back the control column, but it's most likely too heavy. So then they continue down to the runway, and the very last thing the commander do is giving left rudder, the rudder, which is completely inconsistent. So now they crash towards the runway, uh, with a speed of 340 knots and f 50 degrees nose down and they completely impact the runway and they're all everybody killed instantly no survivors one minute and ten seconds 70 seconds of a six hour flight that's very unusual normally you can see things goes wrong before the fatal. But in this case, everything was just fine until the last 70 seconds. And the question raised is, since the co-pilot seems to have 
a bit of control. Perhaps not fully control, but I would say he had some control of the situation. Why doesn't he take over? I would say that's the most challenging thing a co-pilot can do. Relieve the command from the controls. It's not just that easy. It's not just relief from the controls. And of course, in this case, the co-pilot did try it, but a little bit too late. Uh, when it was recoverable, of course, the co-pilot should have said, my controls. And also, it's up to the operator to have a procedure for this, which is not really the case in, in here. There's a Wikipedia article about this crash. And the airline was founded in 2009. It's based in Dubai. They have uh, been flying 450,000 flights over 1 million hours. And they have uh, flying to Rostov on Don for about uh, three years before the crash. They have an accident safety record and they have no previous accidents. The pilots in the crash, the captain was 38 years old from Cyprus and he was just about to reassign from Fly Dubai and he had a new job offer in Ryanair with a base back home in Cyprus where he have his family. And two weeks after the crash, his wife gave birth to their first child. The co-pilots, 37 years old from Spain, and he's been with the company for about three years. And he, before that, he flew with two commuter airlines in the Canary Islands in Spain. Mm -hmm.